Hello, hopefully you enjoyed this upcoming performance from National E Theatre. If you do, uh, well, all of the artists taking part in this project, writers, directors and actors, are self-employed and currently unemployed thanks to the coronavirus outbreak here in the UK. And so if you want to support them, you can do so by visiting the links, which will be in the description below the video, and you can donate as little or as much as you want to and feel able to. Uh, that money will all be distributed evenly among all the artists taking part. If you can't do that, at the very least, we'd love you to be able to share the videos on your social media accounts, on Facebook, on Twitter, with a friend who might be missing their weekly trip to the theatre. Anyone you think might enjoy it, uh, that is also a massive help. You can follow the project and uh, be alerted to any upcoming videos by following the channel, uh, which you can do so up above, or you can follow us on Twitter on at National E Theatre. Thank you for watching and sit back now and enjoy the show. The thing is, I mean, it isn't really a... It's hard to remember it all, it just... I mean, you know how these things are. It just sort of felt like that's how the story should be. Oh. oh, that's better. What policy tells you to break your toes and come home with bleeding blisters every night? I've got a scar. Here, look. Right on the back of my heel. I don't know if it was the shoes or... There was this one night when... I drunk quite a bit and... I can't remember. Anyway. So. Monday. I'm whirling around doing a million different things as usual. It's a busy house, our house with the two kids, one boy, one girl. It's nice, balanced. I wake at six, morning run, just 5K. Breakfast, make the kids lunch boxes. Brown bread, organic. Carrot sticks, fruit, no crisps, no peanuts. You have to watch the allergies just in case. I mean, what if a stray bit of whole earth peanut butter brushed up against some vulnerable eight year old and their whole face blew up? <sighs> Couldn't live with that. No fizzy drinks. I allow them one when we're on holiday in Turkey. Nice little remote villa we have up in the mountains. One fizzy drink and the rest of the time it's water or diluted apple juice. But mostly, we all drink a lot of water. It's important to stay hydrated. And then we're off. Drop off at breakfast club, wave hello to the other busy juggling mums, and then we get, I get the tube. I get the Piccadilly line. I change at Finsbury Park. Once I'm on the Victoria line, I put my lipstick on. Ruby blush. Maybe it was secret sunset. Anyway, it's nice. Quality stuff. Creamy and mm, smells of oranges. Mm. Anyway, this morning, a guy, a bit younger than me, he could be mid thirties, Gives me a smile. Must be the secret sunset lippy or the perfume I'm wearing because I always wear perfume. I'm an 
everyday perfume type of a woman. I can afford to wear it every day, not just on special occasions. I like smelling good. I'm a successful, youthful looking mum. He doesn't care that I'm a mum, it just makes me more hot. So I take it, the smile. I can take that smile home with me later for when my, I'm making tea for the kids and my husband rubs up behind me. My husband, who obviously I love. He was my first love. He knows we use these little flirtations to stoke the fire. A prompt. The work commute comes in handy in so many ways. Arrive at Oxford Circus. Heels back on. Short, painful walk to work. Then I stop to put a plaster on, which sets me back half a minute. And then I stop to look in a window at a dress. Purple. Backless. Nice with a tan. Not usually my colour, but I'm feeling daring after the secret sunset smile. And then it's, it's 9.03 and I'm late. I arrive at the office at 9.05, five minutes late. My boss. He's 25. He looks at me like I'm an idiot, like all the questions in his head about me will finally get to be articulated. I keep looking at his mouth, surrounded by its underdeveloped goatee beard. He's a boy with a beard. I can read him. Inside, he's asking, why is a woman my age still here? Why haven't I progressed? He's warning me. It's a yellow card. Red next time, he says. He has to follow protocol. I'm sorry, I just stopped for a moment. It's just... It's, I know it's policy, but it's the shoes. There's, there's blood and it hurts. He looks at me like I'm an idiot. Like, what's a little bit of blood? That can't hurt, but it does. And it's not just the heels or the blood. It's... But that story is... Never mind. I've turned up, haven't I? Turning up isn't enough, Sheila or Tracy or... Tell me what your name is again. Amy. My name is Amy. Well, Amy, you're not in uni anymore. You're old enough to... Old enough to what? Old enough to... To know better, I say. And I sit at my desk. I've always been good. I thought I deserved a happy life. It won't happen again, I say. But it already has. It's not just the shoes. It's what's gone. What should have been there. I'm a hard worker, me. I'm popular. I can still dance well. The young ones at work, they call me cool mum if we go out after work because I once did the slut drop move. Do you know it? You have to have strong thighs, of course, which I have because of all my running and Pilates and yoga. Yeah, yeah, I could do the fucking slut drop. I can be Beyonce, look. <sighs> See, it's really important for me to get on with people. I work for an events company, you see, so my job is to make everything right for people. The food they want, the drink, the perfect atmosphere. I mean, I know I'm not single and I, 
like they say in, uh, in that song. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, that's their all-time favourite office party hit, but I can still relate to them. I can, I can be young, I can be Beyonce for a moment. I'm not just a, I'm not just a, I can be, I fucking twerked. I always treat myself to a little of the leftovers at the end of an event. You know, those tiny mini hamburgers, the cute little Yorkshire puddings, drain the last dregs of the pink champagne. I'm fit, vital. Forties is the new thirties. I read that or heard it. Someone said it. I don't care what anybody thinks of me anymore. Sometimes I do. I don't know if it was the party or the dress in the window or the smile as I wore the secret sunset lippy. I don't think it was the gin. But it might have been that that made me late again the next day. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I really am. There was this... But he's straight in there with his direct managerial speech that he's perfected on an assertiveness training course. Baby beard. I'm sorry, we can't have you. But I, I, I've been here for ages. I'm sorry, did someone say something? Because I can't see you. Amy, my name is Amy. Well, disappear, Amy, right now. Make yourself invisible because you're a disgrace to this company. Invisible. Make myself invisible. I'm not fucking Harry Potter. It wasn't the best job anyway. Shouldn't have thrown the stapler maybe, but didn't hurt anyone. Only hit the whiteboard. But I won't tell him yet. My husband or the other mums or the kids. Best to wait a bit. It's Wednesday. I'm rushing again and uh, the Tom didn't come home last night. He was working late so I slept through the alarm. They keep saying they never get to see me, the other mums, that they're, they're still not sure which two are mine. They've never seen them. Uh, do they want to come for a play date? Do I want to go for a drink? There's a fair and a PTA to join and can I bring a duck bottle to the tombola? I'm going to miss the train. The train that's taking me to my now pretend job, but I'm still annoyed that she's keeping me. I'm still in, so ingrained in the role. Yes, yes, I mean, they're in the other class to yours. I'm sure they'll mix the classes up again soon and work's just so chocker right now, but I'm thinking of taking Fridays off. Fridays off? Yes, great. You can come and join us for coffee. Great, yes, me. They're asking me to join them for coffee. I work hard to suppress my excitement. This is a step up in the work-life tick list. I will, I say, not wanting to sound too desperate. Great, they say. 
You're one of us now? Yes, I say. Yes, I am. In all the films I saw when I was small, everyone could fly. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Superman. And there was this one program called The Phoenix and the Magic Carpet where they would fly off to the most amazing places. It was a perfectly reasonable dream to have that I could fly. I didn't know that most adults had given up trying to fly when they go to sleep at night. I've been doing it my whole life. Every single night. Some nights I'm successful, others not. I suppose that's one way I could become invisible if I wanted. Just close my eyes. Anyway, so it's Wednesday, work day, or what would have been. I take the same route for some reason. Jesus, I've become so fucking boring. I even start off in the heels, but they're soon off. I throw them in the bin near Oxford Circus Tube. I think about going in, begging for one last chance. But there seems to be a pull from somewhere else. I walk down towards the river, past the hopeful lights of Piccadilly, the lions in Trafalgar Square. Finally, the air changes. A river. It's beautiful. It's always been like this. Constant. Giving comfort. Yes. This is where I'll come to when I come to work. Look at how the bridges light up just over there. The pulsating river. She glistens with promise, undulating, curving, producing so much. I keep going. I keep walking. I keep walking until the sky falls dark grey. It's six o'clock. Time to go home. I have blisters. I didn't even wear the heels. Tom's home this time. He was worried. He was anxious. He didn't get to see me and he wants us to sit down and talk. How was work? Oh, great, I say, yeah. Really, really good. I, I, I think I might have a promotion. Oh, that's great, he says. That's just what I wanted to hear because, but I... I kissed him and grabbed him the way he likes. He smelt different. That was okay. It was lovely. Nice wine, nice food. The kids are already tucked up in bed. He's read to them already. Uh, they read a lot, devour books, you could say. No computer games, no screens. Let's have a bath. Get warm. No, he says, I, I think we should talk. I was so tired from the walk. My legs were starting to ache. I couldn't really hear what he was saying properly. I think he was saying that I was better off without him, that I was always so angry and sad with him, he couldn't see the old me anymore, that 
I close my eyes and listen to the little girl in the phoenix and the magic carpet. Where could he have flown to? Where could he be? Anywhere in the world. I'll buy some trainers for my next mission. My feet are sore. Next time, I'll be prepared. <laughs>